In the previous few videos, we learned about the getStaticParts function, which is used to inform Next.js of the different values to support when statically generating a dynamic page. However, for our understanding of getStaticParts, I have restricted the total number of posts to 3 in posts.js. This also helped me hard code a list of 3 objects in the parts array in postid.js. Now we can all agree this is not going to work in a practical real world application. For starters, we don't want just the 3 posts to be shown. The API sends 100 posts and we want all 100 posts to be displayed in our post list component. And as far as get static paths is concerned, the paths should be fetched dynamically and not hard coded. Let's fix that in this video. Step 1 in posts.js, I'm going to remove the slice method. This will load all the 100 posts in slash posts route. But now that we are loading 100 posts, we also need to inform Next.js that 100 pages need to be statically generated. And you already know we do that using getStaticParts. At the moment, we have 3 post IDs hard coded which will generate 3 pages. I could add 97 more objects here and that would work. But it is not a feasible solution. What we need is an array of 100 objects where each object contains a params key which in turn contains the post ID. Now the method to fetch all IDs of posts might vary depending on your backend. If you have an API that provides the total count of posts, you can use that to create an array of post IDs. However, for our scenario, we don't have such an API. What we can do for our example is reuse the slash post API which will fetch all the 100 posts along with their post IDs. We can then extract just the post ID to create the paths array. So from get static props in index.js, I'm going to copy the two lines which fetch the list of posts. Back in post id.js, within get static paths, I'm going to paste that code. Once we have the data, which is the list of 100 posts, we map over it and return an object with params and the post ID. So const paths is equal to data.map and for each post, we return an object with the key params, which is again an object with a key post ID and this is going to be equal to stringified so backticks post dot ID. Now if you observe closely, the object returned here is similar to the hard coded object from before. The API returns a numeric ID but we need a string which is why I've used backticks. So what we have basically done here is created an array of 100 objects where each object contains the params key and the post ID ranges from 1 to 100. Now in our return statement, we can comment out the hard coded paths array and instead make use of the paths constant we have just created. So paths is equal to paths or we can use the ES6 shorthand and specify just paths. If we now save both the files and head back to the browser, we should see a list of 100 posts when we navigate to the slash posts route. If we click on the first post, we see the corresponding details. If we navigate to the fourth post as well now, the details are displayed as expected. So we have successfully informed Next.js to pre-render the 100 posts by dynamically fetching the post IDs. 
Like I mentioned earlier, the only way we could fetch the 100 post IDs is by querying the slash posts API. In the application you are building, the logic might be different, but the end goal is the same. Create an array of paths and return it from get static paths. Also, if we run the yarn build command, you can see that it is generating 105 pages. And if we inspect the .next folder, server, pages, posts, we should have 100 HTML and JSON files. The static generation is successful. All right, I hope you now have a clear idea on how to fetch a list of paths for a dynamic page. Now, what might not be clear to you is this fallback key which I haven't talked about thus far. It is in fact a very important key as far as dynamic pages and static generation is concerned. So let's talk about it in the next few videos.